You read, they have it painted, but they don't say, well, guess what? We're saying Merry Christmas again. Oh, the generation of the new millennium. They were born into it this way, therefore they believe it must have always been this way. You must know, things change as they have changed already. This generation talks about World War III as if it's the next hottest box office movie. Well, let's not talk about World War III. Let's focus on another war. The war on Christmas. the so-called war on Christmas. Let's talk about the war on Christmas. You haven't heard of the war no. on Christmas? I'm all for free speech and free rights, just not on December 25th. Uh, Robert, we'll have Christ back in Christmas, and, and uh, hopefully it won't offend you. The war on Christmas is back as well. We're not nuts, it's are we? Not. There is a war on no. Christmas. We're not nuts, are we? There is a war on Christmas. Please, tell me, boy, truly. Can you hear me? Lassie! Oh, my, oh, my bad. Wrong show. I got a little bit confused because this whole thing is fake. That's right, the war on Christmas is nothing but a joke. This goes out to Christians and non-Christians alike. Something specific to our generation, something we can identify with, something we can understand. People bickering back and forth. Wasting time. Distracting people. Nothing but arguments fueled by emotion and bias with not even the correct information. Oh yes, another distraction, pitting the Republicans versus Democrats, Christians versus non-Christians, and it just keeps going in circles and circles and circles, it never ends. So the war on Christmas is a joke and this video will show you. Let's start with the left versus right joke. By the way, you do know Republicans and Democrats are bought and paid for by the fat cats on Wall Street. As you know, every year, to one degree or another, there are attempts by the left to eliminate Christmas. If they could, they would totally eliminate it. The truth is, right-wingers invented the war on Christmas solely as an excuse to attack people, mostly on the left, who they claim don't respect true religious the true religious meaning of Christmas. Over the weekend, of course, with Black Friday, we had uh, kind of a question mark about whether Sarah Palin's new book about the war on Christmas would do well. Turns out that the book has flopped, and I can't lie, that I am very pleased by. Some final thoughts now. The war on Christmas. Who is leading this attack on a bedrock institution and religious celebration in this country? Why? It's the progressive liberals, of course. Yeah, so you see where that's going. Left versus right, right versus left. Same old crap every year. Even though they're on the same team, they have to make it seem like they're fighting against each other. But it's not only with them fighting each other. That's how they pull you in into the emotional argument. They also pull you in with the religion argument. Oh, you know how they get people heated. So most of the folks you serve in Dallas and in the surrounding area, do they think there's a war on Christmas, Pastor? Uh, they do, Bill, because they're well informed. And I would say anyone who ridicules you or Fox News for waging a phony war on Christmas is either extremely naive or intentionally deceptive. I mean, the fact is the war on Christmas is real, but Bill, it's a part of a larger war against Christianity that's being waged around the world. And Since it's the holidays, a number of states have uh, public property that they allow nativity scenes on, and that obviously upsets some people that are agnostic or atheist. Well, one case involves the Wisconsin state capitol where there is a nativity scene, and it is public property, which means that it shouldn't promote any particular religion. But since it shouldn't pr uh, uh, promote a particular religion, they have allowed, state officials have allowed people from all different types of religions to put something up that represents their religion. So as a result, uh, Pastafarians have put up <laughs> the awesome. flying uh, spaghetti monster 
related stuff. So let me give you an example. The group's display features a movie poster style artwork depicting the flying spaghetti monster saying he boiled for your sins and urging onlookers to be touched by his noodly appendage before it's too late. They also continue to write, uh, think this is ridiculous? We agree. Religious ideas should not be promoted within the halls of government. Protect the separation of church and state. It protects us all. You know, the flying spaghetti monster from time to time looks a little scary. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I offended him if he would torture me forever. Oh, no, that's God. I'm sorry, I got that confused. And this big campaign they've just put in Times Square, huge billboard, says, who needs Christ during Christmas? Nobody. Um, you know, I, I don't even understand. I, I don't even understand. The, 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 the word Christ is in Christmas. Um, and you don't want to celebrate Christmas. That's, that's your right. You don't have to celebrate Christmas. This is, this is where um, I have problems with, uh, with um, atheists. So what do we got going on here? A bunch of wasted energy. People running around with their little emotional bias, arguments, looking like a bunch of little kids. We see here nativity scene, fake figures. People arguing over this right here. This irrelevant stuff right here. That really don't have anything to do with Christmas. We're gonna explain that. And then we get this right here. Celebrate the true meaning of Xmas. Charity, fun, Chinese food, really. Music, lights, friends. American atheists hope you have a happy holiday season. Oh, and what the heck is going on with that? People getting mad because people not saying Merry Christmas to him. He didn't tell me Merry Christmas. Or then people get mad because somebody told him Merry Christmas. Can you believe they told me Merry Christmas? I don't believe in God. I mean, are y'all serious? Grown people acting like that? I bet the kids ain't acting like that. See, the kids only care about the presents. Let's be real. They don't care about none of all this little stuff y'all worried about. The nativity scene. Let's keep it going. Here we go. Happy winter solstice. Oh, people like to ignore this part. We're going we're gonna to break this down right here. Freedom from Religion Foundation. Everybody got to get their peace in, though. Look. Oh, spaghetti monster. A closed mouth catches no newly... Prov herbs. Oh, so so now we know what that's what that's supposed to be mocking. So you get people coming over here. They're supposedly mocking somebody else's belief by saying they they themselves believe in a spaghetti monster. Right. All right. And here's the festivist poll that you've been seeing a lot of people tripping about. And look here, don't get me confused here. I don't care what y'all believe in. Believe in whatever you want. All right. But um, the way y'all acting is is really childish. I mean, look at this. Atheist threatens to sue town for putting up nativity scene, but not festivist pole. This guy. People don't eep eep learn. Going over there, slamming down the baby Jesus. Come on, man. Look, look, at, look at what he's saying. Yeah, see, he took his video and made it private. This is how people are acting. Over some irrelevant old stuff. Look here. Even the Satanists wanted to jump in, too. They wanted to put their display up, too. But then they got told, uh-uh, nope, you ain't putting it up. But yeah, what's up, though? What happened to freedom of speech? And they want to put up their stuff. Why can't they do it? Just like everybody else believe in their thing, you should let them do it. Well, let's break it down. So I know what some of y'all saying. You're a jerk and you're a crunch. How do you not believe on the war on Christmas? You're supposed to believe in God. You don't even believe in Jesus' birthday. Jesus birthday people run around talking about Jesus is the reason for the season putting your finger in the face Christ mass that's what it says so you got people saying this I'm trying to save you the trouble I don't want you running around saying these arguments that don't have a leg to stand on then you also have people getting offended because they think Christmas is about Christ or something so then they retaliate Putting up spaghetti monsters and talking about, we need to take the Christ out of Christmas. When Christ is not in Christmas in the first place. Meaning, Jesus has nothing to do with Christmas. Christmas is not Jesus' birthday. 
So your nativity scenes are invalid. Like I said, Jesus was not born on December 25th. No mention of Jesus being born December 25th in the Bible. Christians, that's what you're supposed to go by. The only speculated times, this is all we have, is March, May, October, April, September. Should I keep going? Look at that. Almost all the months. Don't nobody know when his birthday is. So just imagine Jesus like, okay, here they go again. They're doing this again. Jesus, we're celebrating your birthday. First of all, there ain't nowhere in the Bible where Jesus say, y'all better remember my birthday. I don't see that nowhere. Tell myself, if you don't remember my birthday, you ain't no Christian. Where that, where that part at? I don't remember that. And then, y'all talking about his birthday is on December 25th. And it's not even on December 25th. Only reason why it is on December 25th is because Pope Julius I declared that it's on December 25th. First Christmas being December 25th, 336 A.D. That's history right there. I mean, what the heck is going on here? This don't even make sense. Are you celebrating somebody's birthday and it ain't even their birthday? Could you imagine if somebody kept telling you happy birthday when it's not your birthday? Like, oh, we celebrating your birthday again. Like, man, how they don't know it's not my birthday? But not only that, the origin of Christmas comes from a little thing called Saturnalia. And that was a Roman holiday filled with sun worship. Look, here, if you think I'm lying, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you how to look it up for yourself. Now, there are books and stuff out there, but this is the information age. Look here. I'm going to look at Saturnalia. Meaning. Okay, oh, let's see what pops up. Saturnalia, the ancient Roman festival of Saturn in December, which was a period of general merrymaking and was the predecessor of Christmas. Merrymaking. What does that remind you of? I'm, I'm going to need some help here. Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you, Mike Tyson. I, I needed that help, man. Appreciate that. Uh, we need to look at, let's get deeper into the definition. Saturnalia. Okay, capitalized. The festival of Saturn in ancient Rome beginning on December 17th. Okay, what do we got here? An unrestrained, often licentious celebration. Orgy, excess, extravagant. What the heck? Licentious. I already know some of y'all like, what the heck is that? Yeah, let's just look up this word right here. See, all y'all, you can do the same thing I'm doing. This ain't no magic tricks or none of that stuff. Let's see here, licentious. Oh, sexually immoral or offensive. Lacking legal or moral restraints, especially disregarding sexual restraints. Okay. Marked by disregard for strict rules of correctness. But dang, that don't sound very uh Holy. Y'all do call this a holy day, right? Your preacher's going around presenting this day as if it is one of the holy of holy days. And really, this day was a day of lawlessness. The heck was going on here on this day? New Testament gives no date of birth. You doggone right. And see here, Roman pagans first introduced the holiday of Saturnalia, a week-long period of lawlessness celebrated between December 17th through the 25th. During this period, Roman courts were closed and Roman law dictated that no one could be punished for damaging property or injuring people during the week long celebration. Kind of like a purge type situation here. The festival began when Roman authorities chose an enemy of the Roman people uh oh, to represent the Lord of Misrule. Each Roman community selected a victim who they forced to indulge in food and other physical pleasures throughout the week. And at the festival's conclusion, December 25th, Roman authorities believed they were destroying the forces of darkness by brutally murdering this innocent man or woman. What the heck is that all about? So this predated Christmas. This is where Christmas came from. But you get your preachers and your Christian networks. Jesus is still the reason for the season at TBN. They over there preaching, doing all these Christmas plays with these nativity scenes. Jesus don't want to have nothing to do with Christmas. 
your Creflo dollars talking about every year Christmas should be celebrated as the greatest day of our lives. See, Christmas marks the birth of Jesus and the day salvation was introduced into the earth. What you want to do? We must acknowledge Jesus Christ at Christmas rather than just saying happy holidays. Celebrate this day with family and loved ones. It is not an ordinary day. So some of y'all going to run straight to your pastor. Well, I just need to ask my pastor about this. And your pastor making excuses. Oh, well, see, yeah, his birthday not on December 25th, but we still celebrate it because, you know, it's like a good thing for family. And it's a good thing for friends to come together and we talk about the love of God. You can talk about the love of God every day. Besides, it's a good day to give poor children presents. Don't you care about poor children? That's what it's all about. It's all about love. Don't come over here with your generic love arguments. You know better than that. You know your congregation just looking for an excuse to continue celebrating Christmas. And they're going to listen to you because they think you got a higher connection with God. So you held to a higher accountability. And you wrong. Because you're supposed to follow the Bible. But then look what it say. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. After that they be destroyed from before thee. And that thou inquire not after their God. Saying how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth. Have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters. They have burnt in the fire to their gods. So you want to take the traditions of Rome and their worship to another god. And you want to say, this is the holiest day of the year. Jesus is the reason for the season. He ain't the reason for the season. He has nothing to do with this Christmas stuff. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Saturnalia, the week long of lawlessness from December 17th to December 25th. What is the lawlessness I'm talking about? We talking about human sacrifices. We talking about getting drunk as heck. We talking about caroling. But this ain't your regular caroling that you used to seeing. This was naked caroling. Rape. And you want to know what's more crazy? It was all legal. There were no punishments for breaking these laws. They could do whatever they want to do. That's why you got the lawlessness. That's why people wanted to do this so bad. They look forward to this just like that Purge movie. And the only reason why the church adopted it was because they knew that's the only way that they can get a whole bunch of people into the church. You see, because these people weren't trying to let go of Saturnalia. They could do whatever they want to do. No, that wasn't going to work. So they had to find a way to fuse it so that they can have the best of both worlds. And that's what happened. What other things they used to do? Catholic Church, 1466. You can look it up. Pope Paul II. For the amusement of his Roman citizens, forced Jews to race naked through the streets of the city. We even got an eyewitness account report. He said before they were to run, the Jews were richly fed. So as to make the race more difficult for them, and at the same time, more amusing for the spectators, they ran amid Rome's taunting shrieks and perils of laughter, while the Holy Father stood upon a richly ornamented balcony and laughed heartily. Even as far as December 25th, 1881, we get a situation where the supposed Christian leaders whipped the Polish masses into anti-Semitic frenzies, that led to riots all across the country. You had Jews that were raped, murdered, maimed, and a whole bunch of property destroyed. This is the type of stuff that went on during Christmas. Where the gingerbread cookies come from? That's when they used to make those human shaped biscuits, shape them after people and other gods, sometimes putting enlarged sexual organs on them. Christians, you're over here with these Christmas trees. Your Bible tell you, don't mess with the Christmas tree. It say, Jeremiah 10, 1, Hear ye the word which Adonai speaks unto you, O house of Israel. 
Thus saith Adonai, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. So how are you going to be over here getting mad at people, talking about Jesus is the reason for the season and arguing, and then you over there got a Christmas tree in the house? What the heck you think this is? They deck it with silver and gold? Come on now, y'all. This modern version of Christmas you see here. It's very modern. Matter of fact, it's new. 19th century, majority of this stuff. Christmas trees just been introduced as something to be celebrated during Christmas. All these little Christmas curls. As a matter of fact, you look back, it's mainly your great grandparents who to blame for this stuff. Look here. Look at the Christmas curls. Look at the time frame when all of them came down. You can call this the golden age of Christmas carols. Majority of the new songs we got come from this era. Look at this. You can go from 1761 and then you get a big old gap. Why? Because when time goes by, people forget the actual origins of stuff and then they come up with their own things because they're born into that time frame. They can't look into the past, really. And now we have the information age so we can do that. But they couldn't. They had to work with what they had. But yeah, 1930s. That's when it really... Look here, you have white Christmas, blue Christmas. Here comes Santa Claus. I mean, what the heck? They was really into Christmas. They was really into that Christmas spirit. Not like now. It's more about the gifts. All about the gifts. Oh, it's about family. And Jesus is the reason for the season. Don't even give me that. Oh, and look who it is. Santa Claus. So much confusion in this dang holiday. People still don't really know what it means. What's the origin of anything? And then we get Santa Claus just thrown in the mix. Why? Why? What's the point of him? Well, we got to tell the kids Santa Claus is real because it keeps them innocent. Keeps them innocent. Yeah, right. And then look. The kids already know that Santa Claus ain't real. You got to work to keep it real, you know? The kids be like, well, if he real, how does he fit through the chimney? He be like, it's magic. And Santa Claus be running your house. Better not pout. Better not cry. Better not shout. I'm telling you why. What the heck? Santa Claus telling your kids what to do. Y'all be like, if you don't be good, Santa Claus ain't gonna get you no gifts. Like, what the heck? Ain't you paying for them gifts? Santa Claus taking all the credit. I just don't understand that figure. Then even atheists talking about, talking about, yeah, it's wonderful to tell kids about Santa. It's, it's, it's so cute to see them. They're so innocent. But yeah, weren't you the same one talking about how God is a fairy tale and how it's horrible to tell your children about it? How does that work? Yeah, Santa Claus is a joke too. Don't y'all understand? The kids just care about the presents. Talking about, oh, they're going to be devastated if they find out he's not real. So what's up, Christians? You waiting on your pastor to tell you all this stuff? Chances are, if they ain't told you by now, they ain't going to tell you. They ain't going to tell you the true meaning of Christmas, where it comes from. Oh no. That the origin has nothing to do with Jesus but was a celebration for winter solstice and it was a mixture between the movie Purge and the Mardi Gras times a hundred. I'm telling you, it was so bad it made the Mardi Gras look like a newborn baby on day one. Innocent. Think about it, lawlessness. People doing whatever they wanted to do and not being punished for that. They could kill somebody and not be punished for that. Travel back in time on December 25th if you want to Try to go over there with your choir robe, singing Silent Night. They're going to run right over your tail. Because they know the true meaning. Go on Christmas. You look this up, you're going to see the same people talking about it. Funny, what kind of war is this? You barely got any people fighting it. Another distraction. And then some of these atheists supposedly know the true meaning of Christmas, where it came from. The winter solstice, Saturnalia. Bring up the point like one time and then after that, the whole rest of the video going into these emotional arguments. Come on, man. Do you know the winning argument to that? 
people tell you Jesus is the reason for the season, you break it down and tell them, no, he ain't. He doesn't have anything to do with Christmas. They are mocking themselves with this Christmas stuff. What do you think you're doing when you're singing the 12 days of Christmas? Only days of Christmas I know of, let's see. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So we missing about 10 more days. I know what some of y'all saying. Oh, that's from Christmas Day to the Epiphany. Yeah, but do you know where they got that from? The Yuletide celebration. The celebration of the God of Fertility Yule. And that went from December to the beginning of January. And they burned the Yule log and put animal and human sacrifices on it as a fire offering to the God Yule. And not only that, it was like Saturnalia too. People running around, acting crazy, lewd behavior, sexual orgies, getting drunk as heck. But they thought it contacted the spirit world. Look at your 12 days of Christmas origin right there. What y'all think? God forget stuff or something? He was there the whole time. He saw what Saturnalia was. So when you come over here and try to tell him it's a holy day, he already know the deal. But yeah, understand this. It ain't always going to be like this. 50 years down the line, I'm sure people ain't going to be celebrating Christmas like this. 100 years down the line, definitely not. Things change. But one thing remains the same. And that's our history. Red, silver, J. Who? All I gotta say. <laughs>